Once upon a time, long ago, there was a poor, tired woodcutter who lived near the edge of a great forest. He had two children, a boy who was named Hansel and a little girl named Gretel. Although there was very little in the house to eat, Hansel and Gretel were happy children, for they were busy each day keeping their father's house orderly and clean. supper was a little stale bread and a half pitcher of milk. He was so worried as it was barely enough to keep his children from starving. intended to break the pitcher nor spill the milk and tried to comfort her. But he knew too how worried his father was and wanted to help him in some way. With a half loaf of stale bread under his arm, he took Gretel to the front porch where he wanted to tell her about his plan to get food for their supper. We shall go into the forest and fill our basket with nice ripe berries, said Hansel. But Gretel was afraid. She thought they might get lost without their father. Hansel finally persuaded her to follow him, and the two children set out on their journey through the wood. Finally, Hansel began to break off pieces of bread and drop them along the path. See, Gretel, said Hansel, when our basket is filled with berries, we shall follow the trail of breadcrumbs back to our house. searching for berries. It was getting late, and their basket was still empty. Gretel wanted to start for home. But when they looked for the breadcrumbs, they were gone. Don't be afraid, said Hansel. In the morning, we shall find our way home, somehow. Hansel and Gretel did not see the ugly green witch, but she saw them. Every living thing in the forest was afraid of the old witch, as it was said that she possessed strange magic powers. beautiful gingerbread house it was for two hungry children to find in the lonesome forest. Hansel thought it strange that they hadn't noticed it before. The 
roof was made of ginger snaps, the chimney of blocks of taffy candy, and the sides were covered with frosted cookies. They were just about to eat the candy windowsill when they heard a voice say, Nibble, nibble, little mouse, who is nibbling at my house? Oh, you poor hungry children, the old woman said in a very cheerful voice. I'm so glad you like my gingerbread house. Then she said in a more kindly voice than before, come in, come inside, and I will give you something very nice to eat. Though the old witch was ugly and her face wrinkled and green, she spoke so pleasantly that the children trusted her. Hansel and Gretel were so very hungry, and there before them was a feast good enough for a king. The witch's table was spread with candies, puddings, sodas, and ice cream. Many more wonderful things than they had ever had at home. Suddenly, the old witch seized Hansel by the collar and jerked him out of his chair. And before he knew it, he found himself locked in a golden cage. Then she said to poor little Gretel, Now you, child, put more wood on the fire. Go do as I say. We are going to bake gingerbread today. was very frightened, for she now understood what the old witch was planning to do. Poor Hansel was going to be baked into a gingerbread boy. Now, child, test the oven and see if it is hot enough, said the old witch. Gretel pretended not to know how to test the oven. Oh, you stupid girl, said the angry old witch. I will do it myself. Gretel thought of poor Hansel locked in the cage, and she knew what she must do. When the witch was destroyed, the enchantment of the gingerbread house was broken, and Hansel and Gretel were free. Because of Gretel's brave deed, the entire forest was now free of the witch's evil spell. The animals sent a quick-footed white rabbit to tell Hansel and Gretel how happy and how grateful they were and to show them where the old witch had hidden her treasure chest of gold and silver and precious jewels. for his lost children and had almost given up hope when he found their basket. What a happy little family they were to be all together again. Now, with the wonderful treasure chest full of gold and jewels, they need never go hungry again. Ever after.